Hey everyone, it's, this is ACJ and this is a quick video response to my previous tutorial on how to make a kind of a custom grunge wallpaper. Uh, one user asked how to create di uh, di diagonal stripes, sorry. Um, so we, we've got here the vertical ones and it's fairly easy to create the diagonal ones uh, with some simple steps. So we're going to show you how to quickly do that. We'll quickly load up Photoshop. And here's the diagonal stripes. So we had before we had the straight horizontal, the vertical one, sorry, and then we had the spiral one. Uh, now we have the uh, the diagonal one. So it's fairly easy to do. It's the same with the pattern overlay. Looks quite good actually. Uh, anyway, so it's, it's the same uh, pattern overlay as the uh, the vertical stripes one, and it's just a uh, we've tilted or kind of made a new pattern to, to do this. Um, so we're going to go to a pattern. Uh, Document. So I've created this document. I've done all the uh, the rules for it and the guidelines, and it's fairly easy. It looks pretty complex and it's fairly large. I should I prefer to make the pattern fairly large so I could see what I'm doing and working with it. Otherwise, you could pretty make it pretty small and still kind of work with it within your document. Okay, so we want to make it. We want to make this pattern now. So we'll show you how to do it. So by creating a brand new document, we're going to create it 500 pixels by 500 pixels. And then first off, we need rules. I use a lot of rules pretty much in all my designs, really, um, whether it be vector or bitmap images. They're all always in using uh, rules to align things. So if you don't have, if you don't have rules enabled, go up to View Rules, um, which is Control or Command R as well for shortcut. And also, you want to put a snap on as well. So we want to create a ruler grid, pretty much that. It goes from one end to the other, plus it goes outside the thing. You could either do this by just quickly dragging them on and kind of guessing where you are up the top. And that's kind of that has a human element and guesswork to it. So what we're going to do is use this inbuilt feature, which is not 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 too known, I guess, but it's this new guide feature, which allow us to make guides. Um, and we wanted to have one every 100 pixels because that's how big the stripes will be. Um, that's how big the uh, vertical stripes are, and that's how big the diagonal stripes are will be too. Um, so it's, f it's fairly easy to do. So creating one on the vertical axis, which is the default for now, 100, and then literally go back to, so yeah, new, new guide, 200, new guide, 300, and literally we're just doing this until 400. We also want one at 0 and at 500 as well. So 500. So now we have one on the edge of each one plus the intervals in between. We want to do the exact same for horizontal. So one at zero. One at 100 again. It's fairly easy to do. So it's pretty straightforward. It's just a lot of mucking on tiny little fidgety things. 200. Uh, 300. Four hundred and five hundred. Now we also need to extend it out a hundred uh, hundred pixels on, on all sides, um, just so we we don't see any of the corners when we're actually applying the lines. You'll understand later. But for now, we want to we want to have a minus on the left uh, the top, I think. Yeah, and then plus on each side. So we want to. Go back to view new guide. This time we're going to go minus 100. So we're going out 100 for the document, and we want to go plus 100 on the other side. So plus 100 is 500 is 600. Easy math. And then again on that side. Same for horizontal. So minus 100, and then 600. Fairly easy. Um, it's very easy to do. It's, it's quite easy to make, and it's very useful for this um, particular thing. So now we want to actually get, well, first of all, turn off our background layer. So first of all, we're going to double click on the background layer. It's going to change it to a normal layer, that layer zero, and we're going to turn it off. So we have transparency. Now we want to use the uh, shape tool. Um, well, more importantly, the line tool. Um, and we want to set the weight to 100 pixels. Like I said, we're having all the lines 100 pixels long. 
Now, we're going to simply, on our bottom left hand corner down here, drag our, our thing all the way up, not to that corner, but past it. And that's it. We'll just show you for demonstration purposes why we actually made that extend out further than we actually needed. Say, for example, we had one here that went here. As you can see, it has a gap here and a gap here. And that's exactly why we extended them out. So we'll just delete that quickly. Um, so now, one section across, so this is from the bottom, this will be from, I think, here. No, wrong one, sorry. So two up, it's always two up. So not this dot here, not the dot, dot here, but the third one up, sorry. Um, we'll place another one to the, making sure we always go diagonal. And then again, three across, one, two, three, again, that way. So that's why we have these points. We, if you, it also snaps on as well, so you need to have snap on and it actually helps you as well. So now we've pretty much got a basic layer of what we actually need. Um, um, now we want to simply get the uh, selection tool, the marquee tool, the rectangle, have it on normal for style, and we want to drag it as a square as shown here. So you want to have the, t like the top left hand corner cutting it, bottom right hand corner cutting it, and then these two will have the actual solid line. So now that when we copy and paste this over as a pattern, so it would be like it'd be dumping, dumping around like as a pattern, so blocking it, everything will line up perfectly. So that corner so we'll line up here and it'll, it'll work perfectly and then, and then like well, that corner here would line up here and that would line up here and it would keep it extending out that's the pretty much the idea behind it so now we want to actually make this a uh, a uh, pattern so we want to go edit uh, def first of all we need to select all the layers so by holding shift on the bottom layer we can select all by clicking that way, or you can press control and click all. So you can go shape one, control, control, click, and you'll like hold down control and it'll select all of them. So once we're all selected, we want to go define pattern. Um, we'll call this D line for diagonal line. And then we want to go back to our document, turn off that one, we'll create a brand new one, fill it in with black as we did before in the previous tutorial, go to FX, blending options. Turn down the fill opacity, put on the pattern overlay, change the pattern overlay to the diagonal. Uh, first of all, put on overlay, drop this opacity down to 40. Oops. And there you go, as simple as that. Uh, that's pretty much it. You can also, like I said, work in a smaller document. I'm working in a fairly large 500 by 500. I've seen people who can. Uh, do it really, really small and kind of scale it up, but you do risk the uh, chance of having a blurry or uh, pixelated in the edges, but I quite like it. And uh, it worked out quite well. It's fairly simple to do if you understand what you're doing. It's a bit over the place, and yeah, but if you follow the tutorial fine and place every guideline, every 100, to make it kind of a, a grid, you'll be right. That's pretty much it, guys. So yeah, comment, rate, and subscribe. Um, I'm happy to help you out like I did with this tutorial um, and this video response. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you guys liked it, and I'll see you soon. Bye.